now let's work with our files finally yeah. so first thing you need to make sure that both of your files have the same name of course different extension I mean HKL and P4P file have the same name yes uh, it's very important because if you don't do that then the um, command line won't recognize both files and it won't read uh, both of your files so make sure that they have the same name and of course different extension well to start working what you need to do is in here in down bottom uh, first thing what you're gonna do is to find you'll find the uh, unit uh, space group of the unit cell and we will prepare files for uh, structure solution so how are we gonna do that we are going to do it with a program which called xprep or x-ray preparation that's how I think it was called originally but to start it what you need to do is to type xprep and then you need to type the name of file without extension so in my case it would be deal all to M and press enter and that starts the xprep and you can see the xprep right here well first thing what xprep determining is uh, it's determining the uh, lattice uh, what type of lattice do you have and obviously in this case we have a P lattice so um, another thing you can see here uh, the P is in the uh, brackets so uh, those brackets mean so if you press enter program will uh, select this choice so for example if I I know it's a P I don't need to type a P I just need to press enter and the computer will automatically understand what it's P okay so let's press enter and um, what the spray prep doing after that it's pretty much walking you through uh, deter a determination of unit cell and setting the files up for the structure solution what you majority of the time sometimes you just need to press enter 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 and so on um, okay so let's go and uh, first it's determining the uh, Chris, uh, uh, crystallographic uh, system in which we are and here we have choices between Octorombic C, Monoclinic P, Monoclinic C and Monoclinic C well what we need to look at it's on our seam our seam should be the lowest and obviously the lowest our seam is for Monoclinic P system so the choice should be B and that's uh, what the program telling us it's supposed to be B so we press an enter and after that we determine in the space group and you can see from the table of systematic absences located right here uh, that we have a 2 1 and n and plus here's e squared minus 1 statistic the value of it is very close to 1 so it's very close to the value for centrosymmetric crystal so combining these two facts we have only one choice of the space group which is p to 1 slash n and that's what the uh, program suggests us to use and so we determine our space group we have p to 1 slash n and what we do next it's reviewing the statistics um, well you can see that what you need to look on how much in percent you, uh, you have your data so pretty much you have majority of the time 100 percent so you collect we collect our data quite good uh, redundancy it's about 2 or 3 so it's not that bad for monoclinic crystal so we can probably solve our crystal structure without any problem okay so we press an enter here and after that the program asking us to give it the formula and here is the thing um, if you look on our structure yes uh, uh, you can see that the we have approximate formula or what we suppose to be in this crystal but 
we don't know what exactly we get inside the crystal. It might be this compound plus the THF molecule. Or maybe it's some kind of different compound. Or maybe you have two molecules of THF, or maybe different compounds and two molecules of THF, or maybe one and a half molecule of THF. So you never know what uh, uh, what kind of material uh, or what the content in uh, inside this crystal. What you need to put there, it's uh, all elements. Just put all the elements um, which supposed to be in a crystal. Okay, so um, definitely if you have some kind of heavy elements, definitely put them there. Uh, it uh, will be very helpful for crystal structure solution. So in our case we use THF as our solvent and this is our material. So we have only three elements. It's oxygen, carbon and hydrogen. Amounts of these elements I don't know. So I put something weird but I must have put here carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So that's what I gonna do. Mike's prep. Here is it. So we put in something, something weird. C20, H20, O2. Oh, why not? Okay, we press in enter, and after that, it's telling us a Z. So a Z right now uh, for the program is equal 3.0, but we know for monoclinic centrosymmetric crystal it's z is supposed to be equal 4 so I change my z z should be equal 4.0 okay and after that we set in files for uh, structure uh, uh, for structure solution what I usually prefer to have it's uh, I prefer to have different names for um, files for crystal structure solution because you don't want to override any of your initial P4P and HKL files so you always want to come back to this uh, data so you'll have some kind of like small backup so let's give it some different thing short which is nice to type so I call it DILS D I L S yes and I press in enter and after that where we want to solve it in XML XS I will recommend you to always begin with XS and here is uh, our file and do you wanna write a new HKL file for your DILS yes why not we need to have it anyway so now you can clearly see that we have two files um, uh, two new files it's ins and hkl well hkl file if I want to view it with a free um, it's pretty much the same it's contain hk and l yeah, so it's in the hk and l intensity and a sigma so it's pretty much as uh, previous hkl so ins file it's instruction file I open it yes uh, it's instruction file uh, for crystal structure solution right now and it's contained you can see in title it contains the name the information about space group uh, after that it contains the wavelengths uh, unit cell parameters uh, there which means Z and errors so our uh, Z was 4 and errors was errors for the unit cell parameters uh, LUT and SIM it's uh, symmetry operation corresponding to P21 slash N uh, space group then SFAC it's structure factors or type of atoms which you have in your uh, crystal in our case carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and unit amount of those atoms of course it's approximate uh, temperature what it have been done so let's right now let's maybe go escape from the view mode and open it with a four to edit and correct our temperature um, I remember that the structure have been done in 120 Kelvin but uh, here in Shalax you need to put temperature in Celsius so 120 Kelvin correspond to minus one uh, would be 57 yeah, I think 157 uh, Celsius. That's what you put here. Traf, uh, it's a comment which telling you that I wanna uh, do crystal structure solution with the React method HKL4 type of HKL file and end. Of course, it's end.
So, right now, you press an escape, it's uh, the program asking you save it, you press enter, yes, you want to save it. So, and right now, let's do actual crystal structure solution. To do so, what you need to do, it's type XS, or X-ray solution, and the name of file. So, in our case, it would be DILS, so D-I-L-S, and press enter. And some crystal structure solution happens. To see the output, what the program writes us, in command line, you just press Ctrl O. Ctrl O. And here uh, you can see output of XS. What you need to look at is on uh, NQL. And this NQL should be very close to minus 1. In our case, it's, I guess, very close to minus 1. So, uh, I would say our, uh, we solve our structure. Also look on mAPS, uh, this value should be very close to 1. So if you have this one very close to minus 1, and this is 1 close to 1, you probably solve your structure. Also look on R factors, in this case RE, which is 16 and 15%. Um, that's very good value, so that's telling me that, yeah, I, I probably solve my structure for sure. Uh, but N, uh, NQL is a very good indicator. RE is also a very good indicator. If you have anything think below 20%, it means you got your structure. Um, okay, if you have 30, uh, maybe you solve your structure. If you got 50, probably do did not solve your structure. So, look on those two numbers and decide did you solve your structure or not. So in our case I decide yeah we actually solved your structure. So now let's go back again pressing Ctrl O. And now what we want to do is uh, to get our first model. Yes. And